I'm a lifelong Final Fantasy fan. Almost literally. I played the first Final Fantasy on NES when I was like five years old. I always loved Final Fantasy VII, even if it was never my favorite in the series. No one will ever take that away from you, Final Fantasy VI. All I'm saying is, I went into the Final Fantasy VII Remake project with a, a huge amount of skepticism and the expectation that I was going to be disappointed. The first part of the remake surprised me with how good it was, and it made me curious to see if or how Square Enix could build on things. But I was still skeptical. After all, Midgar was the best part of the original. That was the easiest bit for Square to nail with the remake. I've now played over 60 hours of FF7 Rebirth, and I'm here to tell you it's not just great, it's actually better than Final Fantasy VII, and here's why. There's a few ways in which it is better, and the first one is the world. So the beginning of Final Fantasy VII is set in this great dystopian city called Midgar. It's this great blend of high-tech, almost cyberpunk cityscapes, ruled by the evil Shinra Electric Power Company, and rundown slums where most of the citizens live. After being framed for a terrorist attack that results in thousands of deaths, infiltrating Shinra's headquarters, and taking part in a rad motorcycle chase, Cloud and crew decide it's time to blow town. They leave Midgar and suddenly, the player is on the world map. This is the moment the game throws back the curtains and reveals that there's actually a full world to explore, not just this one grimy city. It's an unforgettable moment, like the first time you realize how big the map is in Elden Ring. Oh my god, look how big! Or exiting the vault for the first time in Fallout 3. There's a problem though. The rest of Final Fantasy VII's world felt kind of flat and so much less well developed than Midgar. Until now. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth spends a lot more time exploring the wide world outside of Midgar and building it out in ways that the original game never did. Take the city of Calm, for instance. This is the first place the Cloud and crew visit after leaving Midgar. In the original FF7, Calm has the evocative look of a medieval European city. Wooden buildings, elaborate spires, a patterned bricked seawalk, and so on. It looks great, but players hardly spend any time there, and most of that time is spent in the inn with Cloud recounting his memories of Sephiroth. In Rebirth, Calm is a much bigger, fully explorable city. You get to meet the unique characters who live here. <laughs> what do you want? Don't scare me like that! And learn about the town's history and struggles, such as taking on a side quest from the mayor, who's trying to make sure the power stays on. But Calm is really just the tip of the iceberg. Another great example is Costa del Sol. In the original Final Fantasy VII, this beach getaway is just a fun, silly distraction that hints at a certain level of excess from the rich people in this world. In Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Costa del Sol feels like a real resort town with a fully functioning economy built on tourism and populated by characters who believably exist within that economy. Characters whose desires and side quest objectives are driven by the material reality of their living situations. There's a level of detail, thoughtfulness, and consideration to the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth's world that just wasn't there in the original game, and frankly, isn't there in the vast majority of video games. Of course, what would be the fun of exploring this big open world if it wasn't full of awesome monsters to fight? One of the most controversial aspects of Final Fantasy VII Remake was its switch from the active time battle system of the original game to faster paced action RPG combat. And because I love old turn-based RPGs, I was definitely a bit skeptical when Remake's flashy fights first got shown off. But if Remake had convinced me to grudgingly accept the new combat system, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has turned me into a true believer by building on and adding depth to each battle. Basic elements like materia and mastering weapon abilities have returned, but there's also new ways to see your characters grow. Each of Rebirth's seven playable characters learns new abilities and stat buffs through a skill tree known as the Folio System. On top of leveling up and finding new gear, this is another great way to feel like you're constantly getting more powerful. But the best part of the Folio System is that it's used to unlock one of the greatest additions to Rebirth, Synergy Attacks. For these super powerful attacks, two party members team up and unleash an over-the-top animation on enemies. Also, most of these attacks are unique. For example, if Cloud teams up with Aerith, they can perform Firework Blade. If Barrett does the Overfang Synergy attack with Red 13, he'll toss his wolf-like body straight at the enemies, like he's Colossus doing the fastball special with Wolverine. 
These synergy attacks are just another tool for Rebirth's extremely satisfying fights, which are based around figuring out enemy weaknesses and staggering them to do massive damage. The result is combat that moves fast and looks awesome, but doesn't skip on the strategy either. Even if sometimes I got pretty angry at enemies who could inflict status effects, those birds who kept casting lightning and paralyzing me. Stop that! Get down here right now! Okay, so the world is cool and the combat is cool, but what about the real reason that people fell in love with Final Fantasy VII all those years ago? I'm talking about the dark, twisty story and the lovable cast of characters. Like with the world building, Square Enix has used the remake project to greatly expand the scope of its story and the way the characters are presented. It all comes down to time. Final Fantasy VII is a single game. Even if it came on three discs, which seemed mind-blowing at the time, it still took most players somewhere between 50 and 70 hours to complete. By comparison, Final Fantasy VII Remake took most players 40 to 50 hours, and Rebirth will land closer to 60 hours for most players who don't rush right through it. In other words, the full FF7 Remake project is now clocking in at around 100 hours, and we still have a third game coming sometime in the future. And what's great is that a lot of that extra time is devoted to just getting to know each of the party's members and seeing their relationships with each other evolve in new ways. One criticism of the original Final Fantasy VII was that Barrett was a stereotypical, hypermasculine Mr. T type character. That critique missed a lot of depth, but in Rebirth, we get many more glimpses of Barrett's soft, fatherly side, especially with his interactions with Yuffie, the youngest member of the group. Or an even better example is in that classic argument over the best girl, Aerith versus Tifa. But it's the two sides, it's the, it's the two options of girls you can have this. Both of them are fantastic characters, both get plenty of time to shine in Final Fantasy VII, but they rarely interact with each other and don't seem to have much of a bond despite traveling the world together. While I wouldn't go so far as to say that the original game paints Tifa and Aerith as rivals, Remake and Rebirth puts a much brighter spotlight on how they relate to each other. As the only two women in the group until Yuffie shows up, Aerith and Tifa room together, share secrets with each other, even take opportunities to make fun of Cloud together. And while their feelings for Cloud are still part of that story, they aren't the defining features of their characters or their relationship with each other. Remember that girl power moment in Avengers Endgame when all the women superheroes show up at once to face down the enemy army and the audience has to pretend not to think about how only one of those women actually got a starring role in a Marvel movie? The relationship between Tifa and Aerith in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is kind of the opposite of that. It's a presentation of two strong women that feels totally realistic and progressive, but not just pandering. With Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the remake trilogy has officially entered the realm of all-time greats. This could have been a soulless cash grab, and it would have probably made just as much money because Final Fantasy fans are insane and will buy almost anything. I know, because I am one. Instead though, Square Enix not only delivered something high quality, but somehow figured out a way to surpass the original game. We're probably going to be waiting quite a while for the conclusion of the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy, but if Square Enix can stick the landing with that final part, I'm now convinced that this will end up as one of the greatest trilogies in the history of video games.